Hey guys, this is Bit Informant again. Today is, let's see, April 10th, 2017. Um, I want to do a video about Bitcoin wallets. I noticed on my last video I had several questions about um, Bitcoin wallets regarding like Coinbase and trading accounts and uh, what kind of wallets or what. So I figured I'd just summarize a few of these different wallets so you kind of get a ground up type of view and so you can kind of understand everything. Um, I just did a Google search for Bitcoin wallets and here's someone's blog post by Daniel Niaro um, from 2015, seven times the Bitcoin wallets. So we'll first go into cold wallets and hot wallets. So essentially a hot wallet is where the private, the private keys are online well they're not online they're generated on a computer that's connected to the internet essentially and cold implies the private keys or generator are stored on a computer or device that has not been connected to the internet and in this article obviously the cold is the most secure it's thus recommended for large amounts of bitcoin Hot is suitable for frequently accessed funds, and therefore the best strategy is to use cold wallets for long-term holdings and hot wallets for regular use. So, for myself, I use a mixture of cold and hard wallets. I mean, hot wallets, excuse me. So, for my, my big holdings where I hold them long-term, I keep them on a mixture of paper wallets and hardware wallets, which we'll get into. For my immediate trading accounts and Bitcoin that I use to spend on, say, purse.io or buy other stuff or send to friends, I keep those on hot wallets. And so an example of a hot wallet is, say, Poloniex Exchange or blockchain.info wallet or Coinbase any wallet that's online connected to the internet where you can quickly send funds off is a hot wallet. Now there's several different types of hot wallets. There's a desktop wallet. Um, this is a just a standalone application that you can download to your Mac or Windows machine. And this allows you to uh, store your Bitcoin on your computer where the private keys are connected to your computer, which is connected to the internet. So once again, we have a hot wallet. And another version is a mobile wallet, which is very similar to a desktop wallet. And a few examples of these are Armory, Multibit, Hive, Mycelium, Blockchain.info, and Bitcoin Core Wallet. Some other hot wallets are online web wallets. As I mentioned, Coinbase, Circle, BitGo, all your trading accounts, Bitrex, Poloniex, um, and whatever ones, other any other altcoin trading sites or Bitcoin trading sites, Bitfinex, Bitstamp, um, any of these exchanges that your funds are in are hot wallets. But keep in mind that these sites, um, any mature exchange does not rely solely on a hot wallet. They'd be drained of their funds by hackers by now if that was the case. Most of these sites have a combination of cold wallets and um, hot wallets where they keep most of their funds hopefully secured into cold wallets and a small portion in a hot wallet where the users can withdraw funds. And if they need to replenish that, they access the coins from a cold wallet and move them into a hot wallet, which are immediately accessible. Now, the hot wallet coins are always subject to hacking, just based of um, their security is based on the developer's security and how much time and effort the exchange has put into protecting that hot wallet. I've seen hot wallets get hacked many times. Now, my main emphasis on this uh, video post is to educate you guys about physical wallets. Um, I'll just read his little blurb here. If you thought Bitcoins were only digital, then think again. Paper wallets can securely hold your Bitcoin in cold storage form for a long time. You can store this form of wallet in a safe safety deposit box along with your other valuables. In order to generate a paper wallet, 
you use sites such as bitaddress.org or blockchain.info. Once they are generated, print them out on a piece of paper. So he is specifically referring to what we call paper wallets. Now these are physical wallets. Um, the, the, so essentially, I didn't, reco- I didn't cover the basics yet. So a, a Bitcoin wallet essentially is a private key which is your essentially your password to unlock your wallet. And then it consists of multiple um, public keys, which are kind of like, I like to think of them as a piggy bank. Your piggy bank has a little plug on the bottom that you can ax- remove all your money out of. And that's kind of your private key. So if you have access to that plug, you can drain the piggy bank of funds. Well, the slot on top of the piggy bank is analogous to your public key. And in terms of Bitcoin wallets, you can have tons of public keys. And that's what essentially helps you build privacy. So each time you receive coins, you can have them sent to a separate private or sorry, separate public key. Whereas there's only one private key to your wallet. And don't forget, it's safe and smart to have more than one wallet and to diversify yourselves in a mixture of these um, hardware wallets, paper wallets and hot wallets. So, like they said, you can get on bitaddress.org or blockchain.info, and they have most likely a JavaScript application which runs in your browser, and it generates a private key and a public key pair for you right then and there, which then allows you to operate your printer, and you can print out a piece of paper with two QR codes on it, or just the Bitcoin addresses themselves, the private and public key, from then you can send Bitcoin to that paper wallet and you can keep that in a safety deposit box or a safe at home or wherever you keep your safe documents. And your long-term Bitcoin storage is held on that paper wallet until you withdraw it. Now keep in mind, when I pay, when I created my paper wallets, I loaded... Um, I do things pretty extreme. So what I did was I got a... I downloaded a copy of Ubuntu on a CD-ROM, uh, write once only. I took my laptop apart, removed the RAM, or sorry, I disconnected the hard drive. I inserted the disk. I ran a live bootable copy of Ubuntu. I had the JavaScript version of bitaddress.org's paper wallet generator loaded onto a USB drive, which then I plugged in. I produced my... Bitcoin paper wallets on this live version running off a CD-ROM drive. And then I printed it. And I did all this offline. I had my Wi-Fi disconnected. I didn't connect to anything. I printed several paper wallets, shut the computer down, removed the CD, the RAM clears. There's no trace of anything I did. There's no way a hacker could have done some third-party attack and saw my private keys. Um... And yeah, so now I have a very secure generated paper wallet. Now, you don't have to go to this extreme, but I did because I have Bitcoins I'm storing for a long time. I I have a certain percentage that I'm going to hold for a long time, and that's that. Now, if you want to do your own, I suggest you just go to bitaddress.org and try their JavaScript version. Get a feel for it. Make sure you understand what it's doing. Um... But the thing is, if you if you do it on a computer connected to the internet, there's always a chance that someone can intercept that private key. Even if it's a paper wallet you print off, unless you're fully disconnected from the internet and your computer is guaranteed not have any sort of malware on it, or, I mean, this is getting a little crazy, but cameras in the room that can see your screen, any of that stuff. That's getting paranoid, but just keep all that stuff in mind. It's possible. I want to skip down to on his post about hardware wallets. Now, this is my favorite type of Bitcoin storage. I have used a Bitcoin Trezor, Trezor, T-R-E-Z-O-R, as it shows here, for many years. And what this is, it is a hardware implementation of a paper wallet, essentially. It's a little USB device you plug into your computer. And on this USB device, there's... A hardware configuration that has been designed to store your private key and it can't be tampered by malware or viruses or attacks and it is 
totally secured within this physical little USB device. Now, when you want to access your wallet, you plug it into your computer and it opens up a, say, a Chrome extension. And then you can access your wallet to view it. Now, if you want to send Bitcoin, it makes you physically press a button on this USB device. And that is the security feature. The Bitcoin cannot be, the Bitcoin transaction cannot be signed with a private key unless the user presses a button or a series of buttons on this USB device. And that's where the security comes from. So no one can spend your Bitcoins without you physically being there to hit this button. Um, so yeah, like I said, I've used Bitcoin Trezor for several years. I like it. It's a very simple device. It's clean. It's never had, I've never had issues with it. Um, I did recently, however, buy a Ledger Nano S and I also like that one. And like I said, I'm into diversification. I don't want to keep everything on one device. I, right now I have my Bitcoin separated between paper wallets, uh, and two hardware wallets, Bitcoin Trezor and Bitcoin Ledger. And I'll show you the Bitcoin Treasure. Sorry, I keep saying treasure. It's a Trezor. Um, so here's the web page of Bitcoin Trezor. This is what the little guy looks like. You can see the little white device, the USB cable. Right now it's 99 bucks. I'm pretty sure several, two years ago I paid 99 bucks. Um, but I paid for it in Bitcoin. That's the great thing. They, they take Bitcoin as payment. And so I, I zipped over some Bitcoin to them. I received it in the mail a few days later. <clears throat> and the site's really great. <clears throat> it, there's documents that tell you how to set it all up. <clears throat> it's a simple device to use. And what you do is essentially you generate a seed. And when you set your device up, you, you generate a seed, which is typically 12 words to 24 words. And they're really simple words like spoon, grass, yard um, moon really simple words and this is your seed and once you generate the seed you could lose your bitcoin treasure it could get ran over by a car it could be destroyed and all you need is those 12 12 to 24 words and then you could just buy a new hardware device or sorry a new bitcoin trezor and you could just regenerate that wallet from those 12 words so in the end the most important part of this hardware wallet is your initial seed that you generate. And for Bitcoin Trezor, I believe it's 12 words, and for the ledger, it's 24 words. Um, so you keep those 24 words secure. You never put them on the internet. You keep those locked up in your, wherever you keep your safe documents that no one can see, where it's, you know, you're not going to lose it. Um, so yeah, for a, new, a beginner, who would like to store their coins for long term, I would highly recommend the Bitcoin Trezor. It is a really good device. Um, it's been around for a long time. It is very simple to use and I've kept my lot of Bitcoin on there for many years. But like I said, recently I just bought a Ledger Nano S. That's the version I bought, the Nano S. And it's, I, you know, it's pretty much the exact same thing as a Trezor. It's a different company. It's a different wallet. It's, it's set up different. The hardware's a little different, but the guts of it are the exact same. For the, for the ledger, I just set mine up and I generated a 24 word seed that I wrote down. I put it in my uh, safe and I'll keep that locked up. And I would recommend if you're going to try ledger, I would go with the Nano S. Um, don't really know much about the Nano. And the Ledger Blue seemed like it was just overkill. I don't really understand why you need a big, for just simple Bitcoin storage. Um, you just need to go with the Nano S. And the cool thing about the Nano S is it also stores Ethereum and some various other altcoins. So I sent some Ethereum to my Ledger Nano S and Bitcoin. And I also sent Ethereum Classic. If you're not familiar with the two different types of Ethereum, um, we that's a whole different topic. But there's there's uh, Ethereum and Ethereum Classic, and so I on my Ledger Nano I have Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Ethereum Classic, and I keep those off. Once again, these are cold storage mechanisms where I personally control the private keys. 
I do not surrender my private keys to someone else to manage it and store it. And if you're not aware, this is why this is a, this is a weakness in Bitcoin, actually, is the centralized exchanges can are they're capable of storing so much Bitcoin of so many hundreds of users, thousands of users, and it essentially centralizes Bitcoin. And if a hacker is able to compromise their wallet system, then they have access to hacking a lot of Bitcoins. So I don't know if you've heard in the news that Bitcoin's been hacked, it has not. Only centralized exchanges have been hacked. And this is why I'm a big proponent of managing, maintaining, and securing my own private keys. And I do this through hardware wallets. I do this through cold wallets. You can also do this through hot wallets. You can manage and control your own Bitcoin keys, your Bitcoin private keys through hot wallets also. Like in terms of a mobile wallet or a desktop wallet. And I believe it's also the same with blockchain.info. If you have a blockchain.info wallet, you actually control your private keys because your wallet is decrypted right in your browser and only your private keys there are known to you. It's not traveling through the internet and in an unsecured way. I don't believe blockchain.info has any control of your private keys. So so those are all options to control your private keys, but and it's a mixture of hot and cold versions. So if I were you, I would read, I would go to Google and start reading a little bit about cold wallets and hot wallets and and the difference is if you didn't understand that from this video and if you have enough bitcoin to where you're worried about it say i mean because these devices the ledger nano s i believe costs yeah 58 euros and the bitcoin trezor costs 99 dollars. so they're the ledger's a little cheaper but they're pretty comparable i like I actually like the Bitcoin Trezor just a little bit more, the the interface, or sorry, the physical layout of it, because it's just a simple little thing. The ledger has this little swivel metal thing that it's still good, but if I were to pick a physical layout I like better, it's the Trezor. Um, but I like them both, don't get me wrong. They're both equally secure and valid, and they will protect your Bitcoin long term. Um, but yeah, so I pretty much wanted to just outlay uh, and do an overview of the different different types of wallets just because I, I was getting a lot of questions about this um, and I was getting questions specifically regarding the hard fork that there's a potential hard fork in Bitcoin's future that might happen now if you're a long-term investor in Bitcoin and you're holding your Bitcoin for long term I honestly would just park your bitcoin in a wallet where you control the private keys and if you have i don't know if you have half a bitcoin or more i would suggest getting a bitcoin trezor or a ledger it's worth the hundred bucks to protect your investment um the peace of mind you get from it and during a bitcoin hard fork your your bitcoins will be secured and protected on that chain and so if bitcoin hard forks you're you're good your bitcoin treasure and your bitcoin ledger you will be able to access bitcoin in the event of a hard fork so send them to your send them to these devices and you're good um there is a small risk on holding your bitcoin on an exchange and because we don't know what the exchanges will do in the event of a hard fork so but I don't want to get too much into the hard fork. I'm going to leave I'm going to leave those updates for another video which I'm going to post later. But anyways, please check out a couple links in the bottom if you're interested in buying one of these Bitcoin treasures or a ledger. You can use my referral link. I'm not trying to push a link on you, but if you're going to buy the one anyway, I which I would recommend, use my link or not, but I would recommend you get one and just have the peace of mind of using it. All right, guys. Thanks a lot for watching the video. Please check out my other videos. Check out bitinformant.com. And we'll catch you later.